Hello everyone. Our project is on generating music with adversarial networks. The members of our team are Hemang Bansu, Alan Moy, Pratima Sherkane, Patrick Shrover, Anna Villani. Adversarial networks are a type of artificial intelligence algorithm used in unsupervised machine learning, implemented by a system of two neural networks competing against each other in a zero-sum game framework. Our neural network is generative and one is discriminative. Generator is used to learn and train from all previous instances of data and discriminator tries to distinguish between the real and the generated data. The motivation for the project has been taken from the previous work done on synthesizing text to image using generative adversarial networks. GAN has not been used to generate audio from a given data. Application where GAN can be used is to generate music or in entertainment field. It can be used by students as a tool. Generative adversarial networks, otherwise known as GANs, um, involve the use of two neural networks, a generator and a discriminator. Um, a good intuitive analogy is that the generator is playing the role of a criminal creating counterfeit money, and the discriminator is the cop or justice system attempting to uh, determine whether the money is real or counterfeit. Um, so the generator, which is uh, labeled as G on this chart, um, captures the uh, data distribution and it attempts to fool the discriminator, which is labeled as D, by maximizing the probability that the discriminator makes a mistake. And the discriminator uh, is estimating the probability that um, the data it's operating on came from real training data um, for which it, it would give a probability of 1 versus the generator or generated data which it gets a value of 0. Um, so uh, we've included a graph here that shows um, the progress of a GAN after several iterations. Um, so in the first step um, that you can see that the Data distribution is uh, centered in the middle is the black dots. The model distribution, which the uh, is slowly being tuned to match by the generator, is the green line. And then the probability that the data is real, or P sub D, uh, assigned by the discriminator of the data, is the blue dotted line. And then the, the Z line that below um, represents noise uh, and what um, probability it's given. Um, so in the, in the first step, it, the, um, the two models are divergent, um, but they uh, slowly converge and the, um, the generated, uh, or I guess running the generator on the noise ends up uh, producing data uh, right in the center um, and the two models align. Also the dotted blue line that represents the um, probability assigned by the discriminator is right at one half which means that it cannot distinguish between real data and generated data. So the uh, GAN or GAN algorithm is uh, presented here. Um, so uh, it has the an outer loop um, that runs for as many training iterations as you assign. Um, and then um, for k steps, and uh, um, you can use k equals one in this in the simplest case, um, you'll sample uh, some number of uh, noise values, and those are the Z with a subscript 1 to M. Um, and then also sample the same number of training uh, examples, uh, which is X, 1 to M. Um, and then 
using that data, update the discriminator's model by ascending its stochastic gradient. So it uses, in this case, uh, just a, a simple logistic loss fun function, and uh, we're doing uh, stochastic gradient, in one case, ascent, and, the, and in the generator's case, descent. Um, so in the formula for the gradient, the first log term represents the um, log of the, the value assigned by the discriminator, d of x sub i, um, which is the probability that uh, the, the discriminator thinks the data is real, um, plus a second log term, which is a penalty uh, based on the discriminator assigning some uh, probability to generated data, which is the g of the noise sample, um, that thinking that that data is real. So because uh, 1 minus that value um, is less than 1, that log is negative, so it ends up making the whole thing smaller. Um, and then the um, after you complete that step, you again uh, sample M noise samples um, and update the generator. Uh, so the generator is uh, attempting to minimize the log of that penalty term, and again, because that that penalty is negative, um, minimizing it will make it large in the negative sense. Uh, again, using TensorFlow, which is an open source software library for numerical computation using data flow graphs. TensorFlow was originally developed by researchers and engineers at Google for the purposes of conducting machine learning and deep neural networks research. There are several existing implementations of GANs using TensorFlow, many of them doing successful image synthesis. We observed several of these different architectures and chose one to build off of to do our audio synthesis. We chose an implementation called Vanilla GAN, which, a, which is a minimalist GAN that can successfully train on the MNIST dataset to generate images of handwritten digits. The biggest challenge was swapping the input as audio to be able to generate audio samples because of both the time it takes to train and the discrepancies between audio samples, audio samples and image samples. Audio files are a lot bigger than the image files and thus need to be processed and formatted differently. We generated a tensorboard graph of this scan to highlight the important components of the network shown here. D params and G params are the weights and biases for the discriminator and the generator network, respectively. And then we have our D loss function and our G loss function, which are the respective loss functions. And we also have um, the discriminator given um, real data versus the discriminator given fake data. We'll be talking about WaveNet. Google's DeepMind has developed WaveNet, a deep neural network for generating raw audio waveforms. The WaveNet neural network architecture directly generates a raw audio waveform showing excellent results in text-to-speech and general audio generation. The model is pro fully probabilistic and autoregressive, with the predictive distribution for each audio sample conditioned on all previous ones. Nonetheless, it can be efficiently trained on data with tens of thousands of samples per second of audio. WaveNet uses a convolution neural network where each layer has dilation factors that lets its interconnectedness grow exponentially the deeper the data flows through the model. Each generated sample is fed back into the network to generate the next step. Here is the computation graph of the model. The input data, a single node, starts as a raw audio wave. We first format the wave so it is better suited for processing. After the audio processing step, the input waveform is quantized to a fixed integer range. The integer amplitudes are then one hot encoded to produce a tensor of shape with a number of channels and number of samples. We feed that into the first layer of the convolution network, which reduces the number of channels for easier processing. The core of the network is constructed as a stack of causal dilated layers, each of which is a dilated convolution, which only accesses the current and the past audio samples. The output of all layers are combined and extended back to the original number of channels by a series of dense post-processing layers, followed by a softmap function to transform the outputs into a categorical distribution. The loss function is the cross entropy between the output for each time step and the input at the next time step. This process repeats to generate more and more audio. Using the TensorFlow WaveNet implementation as a starting point, we constructed a GAN that generates audio samples and discriminates against them 
and determines the probability that the audio sample is real or generated internally uh, from a random noise seed. We extracted WaveNet's audio reader uh, to be a reusable module um, that encodes raw wave files into uh, tensors for uh, TensorFlow networks. Uh, this audio reader uses one hot encoding to transform input waveforms uh, into tensors that have 32 quantization channels. Uh, we modified the WaveNet loss function and its audio generation logic uh, to be useful in the GAN discriminator and generator uh, networks. And we trained this model on very simple inputs, but due to slow performance, found we need a lot more training time and tuning to produce any quality audio. Uh, future work, uh, we could use the WaveNet modules in various flavors of GANs and neural networks. One of the drawbacks of standard GANs is that training them is a very difficult process. Wasserstein GANs are a variation on standard GANs that help to eliminate the problem. The goal of the GAN is to minimize the difference between the distribution of the generator's output and that of the real data. The difference between the two distributions can be formalized in a number of ways. One of the most standard ways is by using F divergence, which is a function of the ratio between the two distributions. The problem with this approach is that there often ends up being large regions in the search space where the gradient of the function is zero. And this is a problem because if the model gets stuck in one of these spots, it's not going to get out and it's not going to improve. This is called the vanishing gradient problem. We can solve this problem by using a different measure of distance between distributions. Using the Wasserstein metric, also called the earth mover's distance, gives us much better training behavior in practice. The earth mover's distance measures the cost of moving one distribution to another, where the cost is the amount of mass moved times the distance is moved. WGANs are very similar to standard GANs in implementation. The biggest difference is that instead of a discriminator, it uses a critic. The critic gives an unbounded, unitless measure of quality to, to a given sample rather than a probability that it's a real data. By using the WGAN algorithm, we were able to obtain a higher quality output and simplify the training process. Unlike in standard GANs, the loss function converges. Empirically, the loss reflects the subjective perceived quality of the output much better than it does in standard GANs, which makes it easier to know when to stop training and to predict how how good the output is going to look at a given point. WGANs are also much easier to train because they're less sensitive to the hyperparameters used in the model. To devise a more flexible generator, we took inspiration from the paper Generating Images with Recurrent Adversarial Networks. The paper introduced Generative Recurrent Adversarial Networks, or GRANs, as a way to generate highly realistic images. Instead of generating the final output all at once, the generator creates a number of intermediate outputs at distinct time steps, where each output depends on all of those that came before it. At each step, a hidden state H is computed by running an encoder, G, on the previous step's output and concatenating the result with a function of the prior distribution. The hidden state is run through a decoder, F, to get an intermediate result denoted by delta C. At the end, all the intermediate steps are combined to get one final output. Previous approaches to recurrently generating images have taken a more structured approach. One approach, for example, imposes the rule that coarse, high-level features are generated first, and finer details are added iteratively. The grand architecture imposes no such rule, instead allowing networks to learn the optimal process. Our implementation uses symmetric three-layer three neural networks for both the encoder and decoder. used for training was called the Magnetagatune dataset and it came from a game called Tagatune. It consists of 29 second audio snippets over a range of genres and instruments. The samples came in a compressed set of MP3 files, which we then had to convert to WAV files. Using our vanilla GAN, we found that using this data set, the audio files were way too large to be processed accurately, so we attempted using only single note piano samples. Um, on a site called freesound.org, there are several packages of strictly piano and single note WAV files that we downloaded and used for training. The results of the baseline WaveNet model appear very close to real data. There are clearly some imperfections, but you could imagine that with more training, it would be very difficult to distinguish between the two waveforms. The resulting audio, however, 
is quite a bit different from the training data. WaveNet can generate a distinct pitch, but it only vaguely resembles a natural piano sound. Here is a sample generated from our GRAN model. It clearly captures a sinusoidal wave, but it's very noisy and doesn't reflect the tone of the data, as well as the WaveNet sample. The GRAN model does not seem to generalize as well as to large, <coughs> larger datasets, which may indicate that we need more complex neural networks in the encoder and decoder of the generator, as well as the critic. Audio sample generated by WaveNet, trained on a few seconds of piano music. Audio sample generated by our GRAN implementation, trained on a single piano note. The challenges faced during the implementation were that the training model over large amounts of training data took very long. The TensorFlow WaveNet code, <coughs> code base is very complex. Grand model doesn't allow for arbitrary large outputs. It assumes a particular size, trains on and generates audio snippets of that size. This project has a lot of opportunity for future work. The first thing we'd like to do is add support in the grand model for generating arbitrary long output. At the moment, all it does is it takes samples of a fixed size and it tries to produce samples of that same size. This is not very practical for real applications because we'd like to be able to produce audio samples that have any requested length. We think that we could accomplish that by encoding, uh, encoding the state of previous batches of output in the hidden state of our model and then producing more work from there. We would also like to implement a more complex critic for the grant model. We believe the critic is currently a limiting factor in the quality of the output that it can produce. The critic is a simple three-layer neural network, which is far simpler than the generator model. And if the critic is not sophisticated enough to, to accurately rank the outputs of the generator, then the generator is not going to be able to make any progress. We weren't able to get great output from WaveNet GAN because we didn't have enough time to sufficiently train it. We'd like to add more resources to a cluster and then train that way, and hopefully we'll be able to produce more, in more interesting outputs. Finally, we'd like to be able to condition our model on sheet music. This would allow us to do a similar thing that WaveNet does with text-to-speech, where we can tell it what we want to produce rather than just saying produce anything. By conditioning on sheet music, we'd be able to hopefully imitate the style of particular musicians or even just generate music in the style of a real musician.